Today we're gonna to talk about extended reach tool holders and some of the solutions that I personally use to accomplish some of the goals that I need for when we're cutting all kinds of different things. Little pieces of tool steel, graphite electrodes, cutting down next to a very steep vertical wall or maybe cutting down into a hole or down into a pocket that you, you need some clearance on. And so before we get started, I just wanna give a shout out to the guys down at Sile Machine Tool down in Houston, Texas. It's because of them and their support that we've been able to make the content that we have over the last year or so. So it means a lot to me. If you guys are ever interested in one of these machines, you guys know I'm not the big endorser. I don't endorse things. But if you guys are ever interested in an X7, I've had a great experience with mine and I would encourage you guys to reach out to them and explore the options if you think this might be uh, a machine that you know fits uh, into your wheelhouse. So with that said, Let's talk about extended reach tool holders. Hey, hey guys, Jay here. I'm back with a quick video for you guys today. Today I wanna to talk about specialized tool holders and specifically what I wanna to talk to you guys or show you guys is how I use certain tool holders or extensions so that I have really long reach. And so we're gonna start off here on the Akuma and then we're gonna head over to the X7 where I can show you some of the other, other setups. So if you come in here real close, you'll see we've got a tense indicator. And I want you guys to see that this thing, it's, it's loaded. And so I want you to stay right here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna type in S75 M3 enter. And you're gonna see that when this thing starts going, there's literally almost zero run out. And, and I'm a huge fan, I use these tool holders all the time. And so just, just so you guys can see that there's no uh, funny business going on, watch. You guys can see the spindle spinning and we're getting it's not even registering on the indicator itself. And so just, just to be clear, I'm gonna do this one more time so you guys can see that we're not, there's no hanky-panky going on here. So these are the Tagara, the Tagara uh, ADS, that's Apple David Sam pallet chucks. And I love these things for a variety of reasons. Let's head down, let me hit reset. Let's head down to the X7 and I'll show you guys uh, one other setup. So these are the collets right here. These are the collets that go in those. And generally speaking, I pretty much, use, I own mostly eighth inch. That's a quarter inch. And in the drawer over there, we do have a 3 16 But I use them all the time in the X7. As you guys can see, I have a bunch of them. These, are, these ones are obviously BT30. And I use them for long reach with these 316 end mills. I use this for a steel part that we make all the time that I need to reach down by a feature that's kind of in the way. They're so accurate. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up, but they're so accurate that this is literally, I wanna say like a 15 thousandths end mill that we use. The runout is so low that we're able to run these incredibly small uh, end mills. Now I'm not, uh, I don't have a deal with, with Tagara or anything like that. I just really like them. The other solution that we use, and I've, I grabbed this fixture that I built a long time ago just as kind of an example. So if, if you have a vertical wall and your feature is far enough away from your vertical wall, you can use something like one of these ADS collet chucks. But even these ADS collet chucks have some taper to them, right? They have, they have that, that taper and so if you're in a mega jam and you really need as much clearance as you can get, you can buy these. Now there's a variety of different brands of these. These ones I got from uh, the guys over at, uh, I wanna say Live Tools in Australia. These are solid carbide. They have their own little collet chuck in there. I don't know if you guys can see if there's, or not collet chuck, but a little collet in there. Uh, these are carbide, so they're very rigid. Uh, I've actually ran these inside of shrink fit holders in the past, but these have zero taper. So if you're really trying to get into some place that's down close to a deep vertical wall, these things just work uh, incredibly well. So there's, there's almost always more than one way to skin a cat uh, in the world of manufacturing. I find these ADS collet chucks just incredibly useful. I like them. They're relatively inexpensive. As you guys saw, uh, the runout tends to be very low. The worst one that I've ever had is just a shade under two tenths of runout. Every other one that's on the bench, I guess we should have showed them a quick video of all the ones that were on the bench, but all the other ones that are on the bench, I was just rechecking them today before I set up a job that's gonna be running a whole bunch of these little end mills. Come here, I'll show you real quick. I buy a lot of end mills uh, from Kodiak. And so 
This is an example. This is a, uh, let's see what this one is. This is a 20 thousandths diameter, four flute uh, end mill. And so I'll pull this up here. I'll show you guys what this looks like. So that is the end mill that we're gonna be running in the Akuma today using those ADS collet chucks. So hope you guys, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're out there making chips, taking heavy cuts, taking light cuts. Choke up on your tools as much as you can, but sometimes you can't choke up on the tools because you need the reach or it's just not possible. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video just as much as I enjoyed making it. Thank you, and we will see you guys in the next one. Oh, stay tuned, because I'm gonna try and finish this here. Uh, I'm gonna try and finish this, uh, this mold here in the next couple of days, and we're gonna try and make a, a relatively long, I'm hoping to make a long form video about this. We did the first side and all that stuff uh, a while ago, and now we're doing this side, and we got a few other ones to do, so. If you guys have questions, comments, share them down below. I kind of thought it might be fun. Maybe here in the future, we'll start doing a series. People ask me all the time what the X7 is capable of, and obviously, we do tool and die work here with the X7 quite frequently, but I thought it might be fun if we started making some of your parts or taking some of the cuts in your materials. So shoot us a message down in the comments, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.